Now to look into the future, to talk about future trends and opportunities is difficult in a world of unprecedented challenges which we have seen recently in a world of volatility and high uncertainty. So a scientific approach might fail. You all know Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll. In the year of his death, 1977, there were 48 Elvis imitators. In the year 2000, there were 35,000 Elvis imitators. If you take scientific measures now and just extrapolate, very soon, every second here on this globe will be an Elvis imitator. Therefore, I don't take the scientific approach today. I rather rely on my observations, my meandering experience, and my beliefs. And it is up to you to take what you believe or what you may not believe. The good news is that paper has been very important in the past. Paper is key today and it will be even more important in the future. Since sustainability is key, the characteristics of paper are unique. It is based on renewable fibers, it can be recycled, and if you dispose it wrongly, it is biodegradable. And that makes it really different to many other materials and that gives it great opportunities. When we talk about those opportunities, and it was mentioned before by the other speakers, there is pressure from legislation. We have the Consumer Goods Packaging Act in Europe and North America. We have single-use plastic all around the globe. And it's not only legislation, but the consumers are asking for, consum for sustainable products. And that goes to the retailers, and we see immense pressure from all those big groups, from the big brands, to have in future sustainable packaging, but also sustainable promotion material whatsoever. And uh, paper needs to be protected. The, sorry, the products need to be protected. They need to be branded and they need to be transported. And their paper and board is really unique. And we see, besides the conventional products today, also, for example, pulp molding as a new form of packaging. We see dry fiber forming or we see stretchable paper, and I was asked about that before. And all this will broaden the applications for paper in the future. When we talk about substitution of plastic, we see even more. But uh, basically that means that paper has to substitute the functions of plastic, which means it has to protect against grease, humidity, vapor, smell, and all that in the past was not so easy. But today, there is huge development around barriers that are fulfilling all those requests. And uh, we see that in just a couple of years, lots of what is been taken care of by plastic today can be done by paper and it starts already. And you see just a few examples here where chocolate is packed uh, in paper, where sugar is packed in paper and many other products. And the technology to do that is already available today. And there is huge push from consumers. And the technology to do this looks like this. This is a flexible packaging paper machine being installed three years ago in Germany. It is five meter wide. The base paper is 25 to 100 GSM. The machine runs at 1400 meters per minute. It features the biggest Yankee in the world in order to give the machine glaze. And we have on the right hand side a very unique coating machine which features basically all applicators that are available, including curtain coating. It has a back-to-back -back three roll calendar in order to give the special surface finish and also a shoe calendar. And this customer has huge opportunities to basically package food and many other things and replace plastic. And it was discussed before, there is 300 million tons of plastic being produced globally. And we don't believe that we will substitute 300 million tons, but 
there is a realistic guess that we can substitute 5 to 10 percent and that already would be huge volumes to be uh, substituted and this would be a huge growth opportunity for our industry here. The company doing this is Köhler and maybe just to share with you, they did an interesting transformation over time. When you look back into the 1960s, 70s, they have been very, very successful with NCR papers. But they realized, you know, that uh, that might be go away with the digitalization, copy, etc. So they moved into thermal papers because they realized there is a, a huge market for those. And they were very successful in the 90s and the year 2000 with the thermal papers. Now with payments going cashless, they realize they need something else again. And they move now basically into flexible packaging. So you see also how a, a company transformation can look like. Uh, because you cannot just do what you do today, also in the future. You have to transform, you have to adapt, and you have to adapt fast. With all those opportunities we saw, and you've seen the numbers before, we see a positive growth trend for the paper production globally. And um, you see clearly we had a dip with the financial crisis in 2008. The pandemic, uh, two or three years ago, created another dip. But we are convinced that the long-term trend for paper is solid and is there. And if, of course you have to go a little deeper when you see that most of this comes from board and packaging. And I talked about some opportunities already here. Uh, we see unfortunately that since the year 2008, this financial, financial crisis graphic on a global scale is going down. For India that is fortunately not true. And uh, we also see that there is opportunities for graphic papers here and there. Uh, and while newsprint and uh, wood-free coated papers are suffering, for wood-free uncoated there is still room. And we see also a renaissance of uh, some of the medias uh, which are being promoted. And then, of course, at a much lower level there is growth for tissue and there is growth for specialty papers, like for example flexible packaging. Mr. Singhani already showed the numbers for India, and that is a very encouraging development, which I'm observing quite a while now. And India is growing, which is great. We see also that graphic papers are still growing here, uh, I believe based on education, and uh, which, is, which is key for the future of the country. Huge opportunities for boredom packaging, of course. And when we talk here in India about uh, this, we often talk about boredom. I'm convinced that also packaging will come in this country to a much higher degree in the years to come. Uh, and I talk about basically a uh, test liner based uh, container board. Uh, you can do a lot of smart stuff with, uh, with this product, uh, engineered packaging solutions, and uh, I believe that is something to keep in mind for the future. And basically all packaging producers in the North America or in Europe are integrated, which means they do their paper themselves, but also they do the converting themselves in order to have as much as possible of that value chain. And of course, there is uh, further growth in tissue on a smaller scale, but also for special papers. It was mentioned before, if we want to grow the consumption and production of paper and board, fiber will be key topic. And you can see here that, interestingly, the share of virgin fiber is increasing and the importance of recycled fiber or recovered paper is increasing. That is very, very important. Now, let's talk first about virgin. I mean, even if the percentage goes down here, in absolute numbers it is still growing. And the next picture here shows clearly what that means. There is a huge capacity being installed in South America. It's incredible what is happening there with the eucalyptus plantations growing very fast and feeding the rest of the world. And you see on the right hand side, of course, that China is absorbing a lot of that. Huge capacities of pulp are going into China in order to enable the growth there. So we should not forget pulp uh, for sure when we talk about fibers. But, and it was discussed before already, what I believe is even more important is recycled fiber. And uh, there, I know the situation is not that easy, uh, but maybe we have to think out of the box. 
I'd like to give you a few examples. When you look at the history of Nine Dragons in China, today one of the biggest paper producers and packaging producers in the world, they started 25 years ago their business with a waste paper collection in California. So they did not build a paper machine, they started to collect waste paper. And I believe that is something we sometimes underestimate, how important the excess to fiber is. When we look at all the big European players, Smurf and Kappa, uh, also the smaller ones like Palm, Yas, or whatever the names are, they all have their own collection companies. They team up with communities, they team up with uh, collecting companies, buy them, and get access to fiber. That is key for them. And of course, it gives them a competitive edge because they have a bigger share of the value chain. Fiber is available, plus they can control the cost to a much better, much better degree. So for packaging, this will be key. When we look into North America, have a look at VC, uh, Brad Industries coming from Australia. Since many years, they are installing the most sophisticated and best stock preparation systems. And I don't have to tell you whose make that is. But it gives them the chance not to rely on OCC, but they can take mixed waste. They take the worst qualities available in the market and can make paper out of it. And again, this gives them a competitive edge. So paper is being made in the stock preparation, and we should not underestimate that. And maybe a last example, Schwarz Group, which is the biggest retailer in Germany, 125 billion euro sales, a retailer, just bought Maxau paper mill from Stora Enzo in order to convert it basically, or I'm sure that is what they're going to do from newsprint or catalog papers to packaging papers. What is the rationale behind it for a retailer to buy a paper mill? Well, they have access to hundreds of thousands of tons of OCC and they need packaging for their own brands. So I believe this is a nice example of how strategic the fiber question in the meantime is. And maybe this is an inspiration for you to think out of the box if you are in the recycled or packaging business, uh, how to address this. Besides the fiber, you need, of course, the paper machine. And here are just a few examples. And uh, when we look at the different regions, the approach is a little different. In North America, you see two recently, and I say recently, it's uh, during the pandemic, installed machines, and you see basically they are going for width range of 7 to 8 meters, and they don't push the speed too hard. They are happy with 1100, maybe 1200 meters per minute, in order to make sure that the machine runs stable and that there is a high runtime efficiency of the paper machine. When you look into Europe, and uh, again, the packaging machine being installed there, targeting for 1600 meters per minute, and the craft line machine going for 1400 meters per minute. Those guys push for width, it's rather in the 9 to 10 meter range, but also for speed. They are not afraid of speed, but of course, to get to a 93, 94% uh, runtime efficiency is very, very challenging. And uh, it really requires Olympic preparation to achieve those, uh, those ratios. And you have to be very, very uh, thorough in order to keep it there, because otherwise uh, you have a fast machine, but not a lot of production because of the brakes. And then when you look into China, again, they go for big, huge machines, but they are also moderate on the speed. Uh, at least the packaging machine, they are normally 11, 1200 meters again. On board, those guys are pushing a little further with 1,400 meters. Uh, but you see there are different approaches in the different regions. Now one thing is for sure. When you go from a 200,000 200, ton to a 400,000 ton machine, there are economies of scale. And your specific cost will come down in the magnitude of 20%. And I know that is, uh, of course, coming with challenges. You have to make sure that the fiber is available for such volumes. You have to make sure that the customers are around you in order to uh, keep the transportation cost under control. Plus, and I heard that in earlier discussions, if the production lots are small, the production planning and the grade changes are very, very essential. You have to take care of that. But all that is possible nowadays, and uh, I believe economies of scale have to be kept in, in mind. And having 
a bigger machine definitely gives you a competitive edge, that is for sure. <coughs> now, whatever we do, it has to be sustainable, there is no doubt about that. We have to take care of this planet in order to make sure that the generations to come have a good life uh, on, on this planet here. And therefore we need to decarbonize as much as possible. We need to watch the water, the fiber consumption, and there are tools and means to do that. And I'll just try to give you a few examples here. First of all, stock preparation. As I said before, the paper is being made in the stock preparation. And if you have a sophisticated and right stock preparation system, you're able to save in the magnitude of 20 to 30 percent of energy. So it is worthwhile to invest into good equipment so that the operating costs in the decades to come are not eating you up. Very, very important. And there are means to do that. We have very good machines nowadays, we have very smart systems nowadays, which will not only give you great fiber quality, but also excellent operating costs. Water is key, and this is maybe again focusing on packaging and not so much on virgin fiber. But uh, we just commissioned two years ago a new paper machine in Germany with a closed loop. So the machine is producing 750,000 tons per year, and all the water is being treated internally and going back into the system. So there is no sewage plant behind the mill, there is not even a pipe going out of the mill. That is the Alkaline Zero. I have to admit, it is not easy to run such a system. You have to be very committed and you really have to focus on, on keeping the plant uh, running stable. But you don't have to go extreme immediately. There are solutions in between, like uh, standard Aquaflex or Aquaflex, uh, Aqualine Flex, which give you already huge savings and uh, which help a lot with the water management in order to bring your water consumption dramatically down. So the means and the technology is available. Maybe just another example from the drying, which consumes a lot of thermal energy. Having the right wood technology here, increasing the dew point, again, helps you to dramatically reduce the energy cost in that, uh, in that section. And that technology is available, uh, can be easily installed, and it helps you a lot to bring your cost down here. Now, with much less investment, you can also achieve a lot, and that is all the digital tools nowadays. We are generating ten thousands of data points every minute uh, in the paper line, in the paper production line, and normally those data are not being used. By using artificial intelligence, we are able to develop algorithms which help us to optimize the paper making process. And you can see here, we can save seven percent on fibers. We can save 10% on energy, 10% on chemicals, for example. We can save on maintenance and labor, so that overall you get up to 10% savings just with digital tools. And let me give you two examples for that as well. First of all, there is a, cool, a tool called art efficiency strength. Now, what does it mean? In the normal process, you take samples from your reel, bring them to the lab, and you measure the strength, and you get the results a few hours later. So you know a few hours later what you have produced earlier. Not very helpful. Based on artificial intelligence, we have developed algorithms that give us a virtual sensor, which gives us in real time the strength of the paper at any minute. And this allows you to optimize the paper production on the spot, so you can either reduce basis weight, because you see that your strength is sufficient, or you can reduce the starch input, as you see that the, uh, the strength of the paper is sufficient. And there is just one example here uh, in Slovakia where the customer is saving 2,800 tons of pulp per year, because he's able to control the strength of his paper, and uh, accordingly can reduce the basis weight by 0.5%. We have other customers that, uh, for example, are reducing the starch input and they save a few hundred tons of starch every, every month and year. So, there is very simple opportunities where you can achieve a lot and also help sustainability here. Another feature is the break protect. Again, by basically mining the data of your paper operation, 
you understand which parameters are driving paper breaks. And the system gives you 30 minutes ahead of a break a notice that the paper break is going to appear with a chance of 80%. And by looking into those parameters, you are able to avoid those paper breaks. Now in this case, they basically could cut the paper breaks up to 50% and accordingly production is, uh, is improving. Or what they normally do is they further increase the speed, which might result in higher breaks again, but that is a continuous, uh, a continuous optimization that you are doing. So uh, another very smart digital tool which can help you a lot to improve your operations and help sustainability again. Now when we look further into the future, there is no doubt that we need to uh, look into new approaches as well. And I believe instead of uh, using fossil fuels, we should use renewable energy, for example, in order to drive the process. <laughs> so the electrification of the process is one area we need to work on, and we are working on it intensively in order to have renewable energy and use, uh, use this instead of fossil fuels. Or, of course, another approach is to have hydrogen to replace some of the fossil fuels that we are using today. So those are two directions which will become very important in the near future, which are under the radar and under heavy development right now. And there is even more disruptive stuff, uh, but that is something I don't want to outline here that we are working on. In order to make sure that paper making is being even more sustainable in the future, and in order to make sure that we make our world better with paper here, and we have huge opportunities to do that. Thank you very much.